Look, I know this isn't going to make any sense, but after Friday, my life's not going to be my own anymore. I won't have the freedom to do whatever I want. And, and that's part of the reason why I've come here. And Zachary's like, oh, Hannah, you're, you're starting to scare me. Hi everyone, it's Ketchy, aka Ovi Jump. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, the notification bell to be notified of all future videos. And if you like what you see, please do hit the like button so I gotta keep making content like this. So you're back with another episode of Growing Up Genki, and we are here in the Hitoshi household. I know it's been a very long time since the last time we were here, but it's honestly just because the story has shifted more towards Hana. And of course, you know, Hana was with the Ito family, so it kind of um, put Hana, or it kind of put Yume and Kiro and even Yukino on the back burner. As you can see, Yukino here is a full on grown child. The last time we saw her, she was a Todd, but off camera, when um, Hana was, you know, visiting with her family while the Ito household was getting renovated, they actually celebrated Yukino's birthday off screen. She blew out some candles. And Hana and Yume actually got to have a heart to heart during that time. Like, Hiro was a mess though during that, that birthday party. He was all sad. He's like, oh my gosh, another one of my baby girls is growing up. And he was just feeling really old and like, just time is moving too fast. But during that visit, Hana had actually had a conversation with Yume while Yume was teaching her how to knit. She was just really asking her questions about love and how her mother and her father met each other. And Yume was like, you know, we grew up together. We've known each other since we were kids, you know, we were neighbors. And, you know, things just kind of blossomed from there. And those questions about love really got Yume's mind going. She's like, wow, you know, your date with Kiyoshi must have went well, huh? And at that time, of course, Hana was not trying to be forthright with what's really going on with her in her love life and how she's really feeling, so she kind of just went with it. It's like, yeah, it was fine, but she was really kind to trying to pick Yume's brain cons uh, concerning how you know when you fall in love and found the one. So she asked her questions. She was asking her questions about that, so that she can kind of figure out the whole Zachary thing. And I think Yume kind of took that to mean that oh, that must mean things are going well between her and Kiyoshi. So, you know, I don't have to worry anymore about that situation because if you guys remember from several, several episodes back when the arranged marriage was first announced, Yume was really feeling for Hana and feeling like I didn't want that for her. I'm really, you know, worried for her that she's not going to be able to live her life the way she wants to with someone that she you know doesn't know very well and has to kind of form into this marriage and so she's feeling really happy that oh, okay it looks like that they figured out a way figured out a way to grow together in the same way that i figured out my way to grow towards loving her father so things are good but you know unbeknownst to, to yume that's not really quite what's going on but anyway as you can see yume here is feeling something you're looking at her and thinking why is she looking like that well that is because Yume is with child. She is pregnant once again. After Yukino's birthday, her and Hiro kind of got busy and, you know, made something. <laughs> but it, it was kind of perfect timing for them to do that because, you know, after Yume started her, you know, one-on-one -on -one counseling and therapy for her postpartum, it really kind of helped her find herself and she's definitely feeling you know, and better spirits these days, and I guess that kind of resulted in her being able to conceive once more. This time around, she has no preconceived expectations for what she wants the gender to be. Hero's been really supportive and letting her know, like, look, honey, for real, it doesn't really matter to me if we have another daughter, if we have a son, you know, our family name will continue no matter what. I just want your, you to have a safe and healthy pregnancy and for this baby to be healthy. So that's really all Yume is focused on. And I think that's helping her mental health this go around. But they are at the house and you may actually invited Hana over because it is time for Hana to blow out those candles and become a young adult. 
so she invited her over to the house she made her she's like honey come over i made a matcha cake just like you know the birthday we had when we went up into the mountains i kind of want to recreate that a little bit plus i kind of have some news that i want to share with you so of course she's going to share the news with hana that oh there's hana there she is <laughs> she wants to of course share the news with hana that hey honey I'm pregnant but also she wants to share something else or something else going on but as you can see Hannah is just really happy to be home she's been in low spirits ever since she tried to get out of her arranged marriage and you know Megumi kind of blew that plan up in her face and now she's feeling very stuck and so she's been staying with Zarya since then and when she got the phone call from her mom to come over that's what prompted her to jump back on this train and head back to Mount Komorebi she's like I guess I'll spend the time I have left until you know my life is over with my family and so she's happy she's very genuinely happy to see her mother and her little sister and she's she's going to be spending time with them and Hiro's actually at work right now but when he comes back she's you know obviously going to spend some time with him but she kind of just wants to use this time to take her mind off of everything so you may decide to just kind of reveal the obvious in the room as soon as Hana comes in and she's like honey I I'm sure you can probably already tell but I am pregnant again and she's like mom what in a way I'm gonna have another sibling she's like yeah like it's crazy it's just too bad that you know I didn't decide to expand the family until you've already grown up and moved out I feel like I, I would have wished that you would have been here to fully experience this and Hannah's like, Mom, it's not like I'm going anywhere. Uh, this just gives me more incentive to visit you more. And she's like, you know, I would love that. And she's like, yeah, but I mean, didn't you tell me? And just as she's about to ask her mom, some more about the news that she, you know, invited over her over here to talk about. Hana gets a text message from Zachary. She's like, he's like, you said the best meetings, got any more. And Hana's been low-key ghosting Zachary lately because she doesn't really know quite what to say to him considering her situation right now. She doesn't, you know, want to have to face that. She's gonna have to tell Zachary what's really going on eventually, but she really just doesn't want it deal with it right now so she's just been ignoring his text and I think that's been like really getting under Zachary's skin make, prompting him to, t to text her more because in his mind they're still supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend and you know she's not <laughs> she's not she's not making herself available to him so obviously that's going to give him some sort of mixed messages but in the meantime she's gonna say you know no she's been leaving them on red but right now she just couldn't <laughs> So she says, you know, mom, what, what is it that you wanted to, to tell me? You said there was something important. So Yumi is like, you know, Hana, that can actually wait. I actually kind of want to talk to you about, you know, what you have on the horizon because I just got the invitation for your wedding in the mail. I, I had no idea it was coming up on Friday so soon. And Hana's like, yeah, I mean, I guess. And she's like, well, we have to talk about it because there's so much we need to plan, such as, you know, getting your hair cut. And Hannah's like, I don't like my haircut, like I don't understand. And she's like, Hannah, it's a tradition for women in my family after they get married that they cut their hair. Because, you know, in Yume's family, the way it works is that, you know, your hair is kind of the way, it's your crown of what you use to kind of attract your one true love and whatnot. So as soon as you find the person that you're meant to spend the rest of your life with, you cut your hair to symbolize that you're no longer looking. So... That is the reason why at the very beginning of growing up Genki, you may had relatively short hair. And as you can see, and as you can see now, and I've been trying to progressively show it every single time that we popped in on the Hitoshi since Hana moved out, that Yume's hair has been progressively growing a little bit. So as you can see now, her hair is like armpit length from when the series started. It was like at her, you know, it's like what? It was a little bit shorter than neck length, I think. Anyway, it's because when Yume got married to Hiro, she was a very young bride. <laughs> but when she got married to Hiro, she cut all, she got all her hair. And she's just grown it out. And she's like, you know, I didn't cut my hair because, you know, I so much like the style. I actually like it long, but, you know, it's a tradition. So we really need to kind of set up the appointment for you to cut your hair after you get married to Kiyoshi. Like, it's it's tradition. And where, where is Hana? <laughs> Oh, there she is. <laughs> so, Hana's like, yeah, mom, 
that that sounds great and you know i'm all about keeping up with that tradition but can we like i really just don't want to talk about the wedding right now and you know he's like what do you mean it's your big day why wouldn't she want to talk about it and i was like mom like i i just don't right now it's it's my birthday can we just can we just focus on that like I, i'm actually ready to blow out the candles can we do that and you may as well like, I guess we can if you really just don't want to talk about it, but we are going to eventually need to talk about it, Hana. Your wedding is really around the corner. And she's like, I know, but just not now. So Hiro's already seated, seated at the table. He's like, look, I've been ready for cake all day because he had a long day and he's all like, let me see my baby girl, blow out her candles, get ready to go because, you know, this is this is going to be one of the last birthdays that, that we're all going to have as a family like this because you, you're getting married soon and then you're going to be having, you know, your own little birthdays with your own little family and, you know, I, I, I want to I wanna take this in and really kind of savor the moment. Um, Hannah's like, Dad, you're being, you know, overly sentimental. We'll have other days where I can, you know, blow out the candles and have a happy birthday with you guys. But in the meantime, I would like to go ahead and blow out a candle so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have hana make a wish because she's like look my life is ending in you know a few days and I, i've exhausted all the solutions i thought i had to get out of this and it's it's silly for me to be able to think that if i wish on a birthday cake wish to get out of this this wedding that it's going to happen but at this point you know i don't have any options left <laughs> you know stranger things have happened so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna use my birthday wish to hopefully somehow save me from matrimony to a man i don't love so that is just what she's going to do so hannah's really thinking about her choice of words she's like look cake you know great watcher whoever is out there <laughs> guiding me right now or having a say in my life please 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 if there's some way out of this marriage on friday please somehow guide me towards it because i need a miracle so she's gonna go ahead she's gonna make that wish and and she's all like okay i think i think i figured out what what i want so i'm gonna go ahead and go for it so he already has his, his horn out man he's excited for his baby girl to grow up She's like, okay, you know, here go, goes nothing. I hope you hear my wish, Cake, or whoever. <laughs> so she blows out her candles. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to watch her go age up. There she goes. There she goes. She has officially aged up to a young adult. Young adult, lifelong responsibilities, burgeoning careers, and horizons await. Whoever said their 20s aren't a blast? Well, Hannah's not really seeing the blast part of her 20s right now. She's seeing her life ending. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll. I'm going to roll and go with randomized traits, but if a bunch of weird stuff comes up that doesn't make any sense, we're going to change those. So let's roll the dice. She got calm, music lover, an animal enthusiast. I actually like that. That's cute. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, okay, I'll have to change her aspiration in Kaz. I forgot you can never do that from the age of screen. It never makes any sense, but I kind of want to give her an adult um, aspiration, but we're, we're, we're gonna roll with that for right now. But we're gonna go ahead and hit, hit done. And obviously, she's an adult now, so I have a. Oh, I like the way that this looks. I like the way that this looks with Yume and the little <laughs> confetti in the background. That's cute. Screenshot moment. But um, she mostly looks the same. I have a preset in my game that, you know, auto sets teens so that they're shorter than adults now. So all it really changed is I think it just like, cause you know, in the game, teens have like a slightly like smaller face. So I'll probably just lengthened her face a little bit. And now she's young adult height. So. This is Hana, you guys. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Krita Simno and give her a young adult makeover. So Hana is officially a young adult and doesn't she look so cute? I did decide to snip out the makeover just because it was going on too long. I spent forever picking out outfits for her and yes, I did do outfits for every single category and seven with like multiples. So that's why it took so long. But I think that this is just like an really good natural transition from how she looked as 18 
till now that she is a young adult I did want her to have a little air of demureness just because she's going to be the next Mrs. Ito so I would think that Megumi would want her to dress a certain way and so part of her style is kind of influenced by that now too but I love her hair I love this hair on her it's so 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 good but Hana they're all having cake together and she's asking Ron so you know now that we're all sitting at the kotatsu table having some cake Will, will you tell me what it is that you wanted to share with me? Uh, and Yume is like, one. well, I hate to kind of like Barcelona. drop this on you like this, yeah, Hana, but this is kind of our last night in this home. And Hana's like, Mom, what do you mean? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And Yume is like, well, Hana, your dad and I were thinking about things, you know, with me being pregnant again. I, we were thinking that it's probably a good idea if we finally, you know, upgraded the home and, you know, had a larger space to, you know, have a bigger family. So Yume went to go clean the dishes real quick and Hara is like looking over at her dad who's been pretty mom this whole time. She's like, Dad, what's going on? You guys are really moving from the family home? So Hero got like a work call just in the nick of time. He's all like, okay, this looks like it's going to be a drama filled conversation. <laughs> And I was really, really ready to prepare myself for it, but thank goodness a work thing came up. So, you know, you may decide to step in and kind of like get back to explaining everything. And so she comes over to Hannah and is like, honey, like, it's just as I, you know, explained to you, we're going to be, you know, having another child. And, you know, this house has suited our needs just fine you know, while you were a little girl, and then when you moved out, we didn't really have to upgrade the space for Yukino because we were a family of three again. But, you know, we're about to be a family of four, and it's important for us to have the room for it. We don't have a ton of space here, I, I, I'm pretty sure you could see, and your dad got a good offer on a townhome in Windenburg that we're thinking that we want to move there. You know, there's, you know, an old connected friend from you know the little village that him and I grew up in who lives in that townhome development and you know they connected with us and got us a good deal on this townhome that's going to have so much more space there's going to be room for you to come visit whenever you want to and you know I, I think it'll be good for us and Hannah's like I guess so it, you know I wish she would have told me beforehand that this was going to be the last night and you know our family home there's memories here. I, I don't know. It just seems abrupt. And Yume's like, I get it that it's everything's fast, but that's what happens when you get older. Things start happening really, really fast. I, I remember when you were a little girl and I had the conversation with you then about how things change when you get older. And I feel like it's a point of me saying it again, that things change when you get older. And he was like, your mother's right, you know, Hana. Things, things change when you get older, but... You know, you're always going to be welcome in our new house, and I really do think it's going to be a good change. And Yume's like, yeah, like, I agree with your dad. Like, it's going to be a good change for everybody, for Yukino, for, for the new baby and everything. But, you know, it's good to have you here tonight, honey, because you can formally now say goodbye to the family home. And I was like, yeah, I guess, I guess I, this is my last chance to kind of say goodbye. And so... It's kind of like weird and bittersweet for Hana because she's like, so much is happening so fast. There's this, you know, impending arranged marriage and, and now my family home is not going to be for me to visit anymore. And I don't know how to feel. She needs to brush her teeth. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> but she's all like, I guess I'll just savor these last moments. And, you know, you may as well like, yeah, and you know what? We would really appreciate your help in packing up tonight. She's like, so is that why you had me here? And she's like, no, honey, it's so that we can celebrate your birthday with you. But, I mean, it would be helpful. You know, I am pregnant, so <laughs> it would be helpful for you to help move some boxes when we move into our new place tomorrow. And I was like, of course, Mom, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. So tonight's really given Hana a whole lot to think about. She's like, you know, this is the last night that we're going to be in this house together. And then, you know, I only have a few more days until, you know, I am Mrs. Ito. I really wish her, you know what, we can fix this. <laughs> we can fix the fact that your teeth are gross. We can fix that. There you go. Now your teeth aren't gross. She's all like, I only have a couple more days to be Hana Hitoshi. It's like, how exactly do I want to spend those days? And so with her family moving to Windenburg, she's like, you know, I don't know exactly where in Windenburg they're moving, but 
Zachary's in Lindenburg. Should I see him while I'm helping my parents know? And she really doesn't have an answer to that yet. So we're just going to have to see how those things go. In the meantime, Hana's going to go ahead and get some Shredai for the very last time in the Hitoshi house before she moves her family and their stuff over to their new place in Lindenburg. So <laughs> Hana got up bright and early to uh, you know, get a jump on helping her parents pack up some of their stuff. And right in the middle when she was right in the thick of it, who should call but a certain Zachary Chestnut? I think Zachary has gotten a little bit worried because he's been texting and, and calling and Hannah's been dodging all of his calls and inquiries. And so I think he's starting to get desperate and he's like, look, can you can you come over? I haven't seen you in quite a while. I would look, really love to see you. And Hannah actually did have every intention of stopping over at the, Zachary's house when she got into Windenburg with her parents, but she's like, I think it's time to rip the band-aid off the wound right now and really tell Zachary what's going on with her. It's not going to be easy for sure because, you know, she has strong feelings for Zachary and of course, if there were a way for her to be legitimately with him right now, she definitely would want to pursue where that would take her, but unfortunately she's in a position where in just a day or two she's going to be married to somebody else, so she really needs to have that conversation with Zachary and kind of unfortunately put a period in all of that so you know Hannah's gonna text him back and say hey I'm in the middle of moving with my parents right now but I can be in Windenburg or will be in Windenburg and in, in just a little bit if you can you know hold out a little bit I can meet you at your place if that's okay and Zachary's gonna go ahead and text her back and say yeah that's great I'll look forward to seeing you so Hannah's gonna you know go ahead and get the things cleaned up and moved out and cleared out with her parents and then she's gonna rendezvous with Zachary. So Hana has pretty much gotten everything moved out of her parents house for them. If you, I'm actually gonna zoom out because I wanted to stay in that shot for some stuff but <laughs> you know what let's let me show you what's going on with the house. So the house is empty as you can see Hana pretty much spent the whole morning you know helping her parents move stuff onto the moving truck so you know this was Yukino's room that used to be Hana's room so the bunk bed and the bed's gone the desk is gone everything in this room is gone the kutatsu table is gone they actually sold the furniture a lot of the furniture they're not going to take because the townhouse is going to have a lot of the amenities they need already in there they bought it furnished so they sold the kutatsu table they did take some of the appliances with them so they are taking a hot pot family pictures and all of that but for the most part they are, you know, they sold off of most of their furniture, so they're moving light. So, you know, upstairs, <laughs> upstairs, you know, Hana or Yume and Hiro's bedroom is completely cleared out. They are taking the bed with them, but that's literally it, and it's just, you know, empty. This is it. So that everything is empty. Hiro actually went to work, so he's gonna meet them at. Oh, look at him! He's gone right now. <laughs> he's gonna meet them at the new place. He's, you know. Feeling a little bit, you know, nervous about the move, which is why he looks like this. But he's like, you know, I'll meet you guys at the townhome after I get back to, from work. And the movers are pretty much going to take care of moving their stuff over to the townhouse. But over here, Hannah is just talking to her mom. She's like, Mom, you know, I know I said that I would help you guys move and I am going to do that. I'm going to help you guys get settled in. But as soon as we get into Windenburg, I actually have to meet with a friend, and, you know, get some things wrapped up with them and Yume is not really sure what she's talking about I guess she's thinking that maybe oh well you know Hana went to school in the bird maybe she has this school friend that she wants to kind of catch things up with before and and kind of just wrap things up with them because you know she's gonna be getting married soon so Yume's like okay I mean that's that's fine honey I mean you're, you're gonna come back though and help me get things settled and you know Hana's like yeah of, of course mom of course I'm going to help you get settled, it's just that I really need to kind of meet with this friend, it's important. And so you may like, of course honey, you know, go ahead and take care of what you need to take care of with your friend, just you know, don't, don't, don't stay out too long. And you know, you may like, or Hannah's like, sure mom, I definitely will, but she's a little bit nervous about, you know, how it's going to go, so she's, she's trying to cover it up and whatnot and just talk pleasantly with her mom and be like, but you know mom, like it, I can't wait to see you, know, you guys move into your new home and be settled in, uh, you know, 
In the back of her mind, she's really thinking about how she's going to do this conversation with Zachary. I don't know why this hair is doing this here. I hope it's not glitched, but <laughs> hopefully that cleans itself up. But we're going to go ahead and uh, meet Hannah over with Zachary. Because she's going to be heading into Windenburg with her mom in just a bit now. And she, her first stop is, you know, Zachary's house. So we're going to see how that conversation is going to go. So it's one dreary day in Windenburg and the weather is pretty much reflecting exactly how she feels right now. She's like, I'm kind of dreading this and I don't really want to do it, but I know I can't, I can't keep this hanging for as long as it, it as, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time. So <laughs> she's going to go ahead and knock on Zachary's door and she's going to have a conversation. She's going to have the conversation. So we're going to have her go ahead and just let Zachary know what is up. So this is so cute. When Hannah came um, and knocked on Zachary's house door, he was in the living room watching a movie with his mother. That's so adorable. And I can imagine he's over here because he told his mom that Hannah was coming over. So, you know, she's met her once before when she came over to study, but he wanted to tell her a little bit more about her. And he's all like, Mom, you'll love her. She's great. She's so smart. And she's so pretty. And she's just so perfect. And he's like, I think you'll really like her. And he's just like really excited about it. And it's just got um, his mother like really tickled about it. He's all like, Well, she sounds like an amazing girl, Zachary. And he's like, She really is, Mom. Like, I, I'm really looking forward to you guys getting to know each other. But, you know, this is Zachary's young adult makeover because everybody kind of aged up. And I think he looks so so good he grew his hair out a little bit more he looks so, so much more handsome than he already looked oh he's so cute but he's gonna go ahead and head out to the foyer and I see Hana. so Hana actually stepped out a little bit I think she was just feeling a little bit uncomfortable and closed in Zachary's house so Zachary came out to find her he's like oh there you are Hana. like how are you it's been too long so it gives her a big old warm hug and of course Hana leans into it because she has missed Zachary she just hasn't known what to say to him She's like, I've been good. And he's like, that's good. And, you know, I've been worried about you. You haven't been, you know, replying to any of my texts. And I just, you know, you look, you look really good. Like it, <laughs> it just seems like it's been forever since we spent any time together. That was my worry when we graduated from high school. And Hannah's like, I know, Zachary. It's just, you know, things have just been a little bit complicated with me. And she gives him another hug back. They're so cute. So Zachary says, oh, <laughs> he gives her a kiss first. She's like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And just, whoa, <laughs> look at Catherine. It's like she walked out and she's like, I was just checking on you guys. And I wasn't expecting you guys to be out here making out. Okay. <laughs> so Zachary kind of caught Hannah off guard by giving her a, a kiss. Because he's missed her and he hasn't seen her in quite a while. So Hannah, uh, without even thinking about it, just like kissed him back. She's like, and he's all like, I see you missed me too. And she's like, maybe just a little bit. And he's all like, well, listen, the reason why I've been trying to, you know, get you on the phone is because I got into Brightchester and I got into Foxbury. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's amazing, Zachary. And she hugs him. She's like, yeah, I got into distinguished programs in both schools. And it's just so exciting. I don't even know where I'm going to, you know, decide on yet. And she's like, well, that's a huge decision, Zachary. That's, that's amazing. And he's like, well, you know what would help me figure it out if you told me where you're going to college? So Hannah says, I mean, Zachary, I, I would love to, but I, I didn't apply to the university. I, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. And Zachary's like, oh, but, but why? You've always been so smart and you, know, you, you could probably do well anywhere. Why didn't you apply to university? So Hannah tells him, well, honestly, like I haven't given a whole lot of thought to what I was going to do after high school. And quite honestly, in my life after high school, a lot of it's not going to really be much of my own, unfortunately. So I didn't even want to plan that far ahead because I just couldn't even think about it. So Zachary's really confused now. He's like, this isn't making any sense, Hannah. What do you mean, like, your your life after high school wasn't going to be your, your own? I mean, you know, uh, grade school and high school and all of that's such a small fraction of anybody's life. You know, it's the afterwards that most people look forward to. That's the, you know grand finale being able to have your choice to do whatever you want so he's like Hannah what do you what do you mean I'm confused like why wouldn't you want to take control of your life after high school there's so much that you you know have the ability to do now so Hannah tells Zachary well for me there there isn't Zachary what <laughs> y'all are funny 
<laughs> I, it's funny how you thought that's what I wanted to say next in the storyline. Sure. So Zachary is like, honey, maybe you're just tense. Maybe maybe you need you know a back massage or something to get yourself loosened up and get your head thinking straight. Like I don't know what you mean about you not having choices. The world's your oyster right now. And Hannah's like, Zachary, that that sounds and this feels really really great, but you just you, you're not understanding. So she tells Jack Zachary, look, I know this isn't going to make any sense, but after Friday, my life's not going to be my own anymore. I won't have the freedom to do whatever I want. And, and that's part of the reason why I've come here. And Zachary's like, Hana, you're, you're starting to scare me. What do you mean? Like, this is part of the reason that you came here. Like, I invited you over because I wanted to tell you about me getting into uni. And, you know, my family is going out to celebrate me getting into uni. And I wanted you to come with us. I, I told my mom all about it, about how I wanted you to come to dinner with us and they got, could get to know you better. Uh, and now you're, you're saying all this crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense. Like, what is going on? So Hannah rips the band-aid off and he's, she's like, Zachary, we, we have to break up. We can't be together anymore. And Zachary's like, Hannah, you're talking crazy. You don't mean that. And she's like, Zachary, I do. We, we can't be together anymore. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it, but we can't be together. So Zachary he says to her, Anna, I know you don't mean that. We, we had that breakthrough when we were in the mountain excursion. Don't you remember where you admitted that you had feelings for me? And I was able to admit that I have feelings for you. We both were on the same page. That's why we started dating. You felt the same way that I felt. So you can't all of a sudden just not feel those things anymore. He's like, I just, this doesn't make sense. He's like, I, I feel so strongly for you. You know how fond I am of you. Like, why wouldn't you want to keep pursuing where that's going to take us. So all of Hannah's emotions are starting to come to a head here because obviously she doesn't really want to break up with Zachary. Of course she's fond of him. So she just kind of breaks down and she's like, Zachary, I just, I don't know how else to say this. It's, you're making this a bit harder than I ever thought it would be, but like, I, I can't explain it to you. There's no way I could explain it to you that she would understand that we can't, we can't be together. So Zachary's sister, like, Hana, it's okay, like, just talk to me, what's going on, we can figure this out, like, we don't have to break up, like, you need to just be up front with me and, and let me know what's going on with you, and Hana's like, no, Zachary, I, I can't, I can't do this, I can't, we have to break up, we're broken up, I, I've gotta go. So Hana runs off away from Zachary, leaving him completely just in a large and not really understanding what happened and why they've just broken up now, and she's just upset, and she's like, there's no way I could have explained to him that would make sense. I'd have to go through the whole debacle of the arranged marriage, and I just, I, I don't want to I have to explain all that to Zachary because it's going to sound crazy and it's going to make me look bad, the fact that I pursued him even while being engaged to somebody else, and I just don't, I don't want him to see me that way or to judge me or for him to have bad feelings. He may not understand why we're breaking up right now, but I'd, I'd prefer that over having to tell him the whole truth behind the engaged marriage. So, so this, we're going to leave things here, you guys. This was a little bit of a dramatic ending with her and Zachary breaking up, her having to call that whole thing off because from her standpoint, there's, there's no way out of this arranged marriage. So next episode is going to be the grand finale of season one, and it's going to end with Hana's marriage to Kiyoshi, or is it? Let me know your com uh, your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think that the marriage to Kiyoshi is actually going to happen? Or is there a side door, some way out of this that Hana's going to discover or something that's going to be revealed to her in that last episode? I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas about that. So as always guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay down with I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, 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 oh.